This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Fees and generous donations from viewers like you. Hello and welcome. I'm Claire Healy and you're watching the Amherst Weekly Report from Amherst Media. Today we will be summarizing and discussing the news out of Amherst, Massachusetts from this past week. First, Happy Yom Kippur to those who celebrate. This past Monday, September 28th, was Yom Kippur. As with Rosh Hashanah, the week prior, Yom Kippur was observed by many virtually across the country. We spoke with Rabbi Raphael Light, educator at the Orthodox Union's Jewish Learning Initiative on campus at UMass Amherst, about how synagogues and worshipers have been able to celebrate these holidays amidst the pandemic. Here's what he said. So Rosh Hashanah, um, meaning the, the new year, um, the Hebrew words themselves, Rosh can also mean not just um, the head of, like the head of the new year in, in terms of time, but it could actually literally mean Rosh means head. Um, so it's like the head of the year, meaning it's like the headquarters of the, of the rest of the year on the Jewish calendar. Um, and Yom Kippur is uh, the Day of Atonement. Um, these together are usually referred to as the high holidays, or in Hebrew, the Yamim Noraim, the days of awe. So if Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the year, it's also the head of the body, of the human body. And um, we know that, you know, our, our brains control the rest of our limbs. And so in many ways, we believe that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the, the head of the year, um, like the mind of the year, um, has, is so significant that the, the way we think and act and, and feel and, and treat one another during these days, um, they'll have a very significant effect on the rest of our year. For most students, they were, they either celebrated at home with their fa immediate family in a small way, but I assume that it was, it was really beautiful for a lot of them and also very challenging not to be with friends for a lot of them too. Um, and otherwise people uh, celebrated over Zoom or other virtual uh, mediums for doing services on Zoom. Um, which, you know, on the one hand, it's not the same because you're not in person with people and the singing is a little bit off. And, um, but on the other hand, you know, you don't have to get as dressed up. You can, um, you can take a break and not feel too guilty about it if you want to just like, take a walk. Um, so there's ad advantages and disadvantages to this year too. The high holidays this year, days of awe, th this year they were very down to earth. They were very um, relaxed even. Um, they weren't as intense as they, they are. Um, socially, they weren't as intense. Um, we had, you know, the sky above us to, to um, gain inspiration from while we were praying and we were surrounded by nature. Um, so that, that was a great benefit this year to being forced to be outside um, in order to experience the services of the high holidays feel like the community or the definition of our community has been able to be expanded because of Zoom and because of video conferencing. Um, now, on the one hand, it's expanded and that's amazing. Uh, on the other hand, it might thin out a little bit more because it's not in person. Um, it's a little, right, it's a little less tangible. Um, but then again, it's allowing us to have a reach for, for extending our family. Um, all the further, regardless of, of, uh, of our proximity, our physical proximity. Amherst Town Manager Paul Bockelman has named a new Human Resources Director and Health Director. Donna Ray Kennelly will serve as the new Human Resources Director. She previously was working at Western New England University as the Associate Director of Human Resources and Title IX Investigator. Emma Dragon will join the town as Health Director. Dragon is a registered nurse with extensive experience in the public school system and with the Federal Disaster Medical Assistance Team. Balkelman, when discussing these appointments, said, quote, I am so pleased to add these two professionals to the town's leadership team. They will be excellent colleagues to our existing team and will be dedicated to serving the needs of the people of Amherst. UMass Amherst astronomers won a three-year, $5 million grant from the National Science Foundation to build a telescope in Mexico. To do so, they worked in collaboration with Mexico, and the resulting telescope is a large millimeter telescope and the largest telescope of its kind in the world. While the telescope is closed due to COVID, it is operational and will be accessible to U.S. astronomers and institutions. 
We spoke with UMass professor Peter Schlerb, who leads the team of astronomers at UMass Amherst working on this project. Massachusetts isn't such a great spot to put a millimeter wave antenna, although we, we had one here for a long time. But the, the new site on top of this great mountain, and, uh, so our, our, our current mountain site is uh, 4,600 meters or about 15,000 feet. Um, so it is, uh, it's way up there. Uh, and uh, that gives us a really great uh, uh, platform uh, to, to view the universe. Our telescope is a great telescope and it's going to do a lot of things well. So it can, we can study things in the solar system, we can study the clouds of gas and dust in our own galaxy that form stars, we can, because they're relatively close, we can study them in great detail and learn about the process that form stars. But the telescope really has uh, what I would call a killer app. You know, usually in astronomy, the farther away you look, the fainter the objects that you're looking at are. It turns out that nature has conspired to make, um, uh, make a, a, a situation where in millimeter wave radio astronomy, the objects that we look at actually become intrinsically brighter the farther that they get away. Now, why is this important? It's important because if I can reach a particular limit of sensitivity, I can detect everything um, out to very, very, very great distances uh, with this telescope. Um, I'm not, I won't be uh, limited to just the very brightest things at great distances. I'll be able to see everything down to a particular level. And this means that we have an unprecedented opportunity to study the way that objects um, 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 uh, at, appear at these different distances. Now, why is that interesting? It's interesting because light takes a finite amount of time to uh, reach us from any particular distance. So as I go farther and farther away from the Earth, I see objects that are older and older. The light because the light that's emitted by those objects that I received today was emitted farther and farther back in the history of the universe. So what I have with my instrument, with the telescope, is kind of a time machine. If I look out to different distances, I can see the universe as it was uh, in the distant past. We can see things as they were within the, within the first billion years or so of the, of the origin of, of the universe. So the universe is 14 billion years old or something. So we're seeing way, 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 way back. Next, the town council has unanimously approved the Percent for Art bylaw, allowing the town to commission visual artists for public art installments. In the motion on Monday, September 21st, it says that the purpose of the bylaw is to, quote, promote the enjoyment of the arts by increasing the quantity and quality of public art in Amherst. The law establishes a funding program for public art where for any eligible town construction project budgeted at a minimum of $1 million, 0.5% of the capital costs will be allocated to public art. Next, UMass Amherst saw its first big COVID-19 outbreak after a number of students attending the same gathering contracted the virus. 15 students who live off campus tested positive for the virus September 28th in a cluster that now is linked to a total of 28 positive cases. These students are now quarantining off campus, and the majority are asymptomatic. This now brings the total number of positive cases on UMass Amherst's campuses to 69 since the start of testing in August. The town council meeting this upcoming Monday, October 5th at 6.30 p.m. will include a COVID-19 update with a presentation from town manager Paul Bockelman and acting health director Jen Brown. We spoke with Lynn Griesmer, Town Council President, about her concerns following the outbreak and her thoughts going forward. The fact that these numbers became as evident as fast as they did is because the university was immediately in touch with the town. And our health departments are working together and our leadership are working together. I think what we need is the community to continue to work with us on this and uh, understand that People are very much alert to this. I think, for example, if I were to ask the town manager right now, how have you spent your last um, several days? He would say 50% of it has probably been on this issue alone. 
and you know he's got a whole other set of jobs to do besides tracking this so work with us um, at the same time uh, work with um, the students and understand um, that you need to let us know when things are not right in your neighborhoods and you need to let us know when they are right in your neighborhoods. Finally, the League of Women Voters of Massachusetts has released a 2020 voters guide for the November 3rd election. Early in-person voting will be happening from October 17th to October 30th. Check your town clerk's office for voting times. October 24th will be the last day to register to vote in the November 3rd election and October 28th is the final day to request an application to vote by mail. Visit www.vote411.org for more information. That's all the news for this week. Thank you for tuning in to the Amherst Weekly Report from Amherst Media. I'm Claire Healy and we'll see you again at the same time next week.